call the plan commission meeting uh, to order on Monday, March 21st, 2022. The first item on the agenda is roll call, please. Commissioner Bonnicher. Commissioner Williams. Here. Commissioner Knox. Commissioner Weber. Here. Commissioner Voskel. Here. Commissioner Udell. And Commissioner Markline. Here. Or present, we have a quorum. Thank you. Second item on the agenda, the approval of minutes, which fall under consent. So moved. Item number three, the approval of final plats and certified survey maps and easement releases. Certified survey map 22003-C, Hendricks Land Development, one lot along Falling Leaf Trail. That is a pass under consent. So moved. Item number three, the approval of final plat, oh, excuse me, I just read that. <laughs> item number four, set for public hearing. The first item is a conditional use permit to construct a restaurant, Chili's, with shared access and shared utility infrastructure at 3315 Milton Avenue. And that's set for public hearing on April 4th, 2022. The second item set for public hearing is a conditional use permit amendment to allow alternative building materials and lighting at 2319 West Court Street, Lloyd's True Value Hardware, and that is also set for public hearing on April 4th, 2022. Item number five, old business. The first item under old business is a public hearing, conditional use permit to construct a hotel, True by Hilton, at 2702 Pontiac Place. Brian Schweigel, senior planner. Uh, this request for a conditional use permit was submitted by Pontiac Place Hotel Associates, LLC. Uh, the proposed project would involve the construction of a second hotel on the Marriott Town Place Suites property. Uh, and you can see the subject site outlined in yellow on the map on the screen. Uh, generally speaking, this site is located within a transitional area of the community between the uh, regional commercial uh, zoning and land uses to the north and multifamily residential zoning and land uses to the south. The subject site itself is zoned B4 Business Highway District and a uh, second building on the property as is proposed requires conditional use review and approval by the Plan Commission. The proposed uh, project involves a four-story 90-room uh, hotel that would be built in the lawn area, existing lawn area, located west of the uh, Marriott Hotel. A total of 99 parking stalls are provided, and so that's in the kind of the grayish area of the site plan on the screen here. Total of 99 parking stalls, which meets the minimum ordinance requirement. Uh, overall, over half of the property, and when I say property, I mean the uh, entire development site that you see here with both hotels. Um, even after development of the second hotel, there, over half of the site will remain devoted to green space, uh, far exceeding the minimum requirement of 20% in the B4 district. Design of the Marriott project in 2017 was intended to facilitate further development of the site as is now proposed uh, with some shared stormwater management facilities along the interstate frontage of the site as well as public sanitary sewer and water main that were extended to the property from Holiday Drive within an easement on the neighboring Trinity Free Lutheran Church property to the south. And so I'll point out, uh, you can see the shared stormwater management facilities here along the interstate and the public utility mains, uh, sanitary sewer as well as water uh, were extended from Holiday Drive here northward to the site, uh, generally in this alignment here just to the right of the church, the Trinity Church uh, parking lot uh, back in 2017 in conjunction with the Marriott. Uh, both the stormwater management plan and the utility plan for the proposed project have been reviewed and approved by the city's engineering division and utilities divisions. Uh, the subject property, the two hotels, rely upon shared access over the neighboring marketplace retail property to the north and a permanent easement is in place for this facility. Uh, this creates a sort of private frontage road uh, along the north and east sides of the marketplace with directional signage to and from the hotel site. Um, so this is, again, the site plan on the left-hand side, and on the right um, is an aerial photograph of the area, and you can see the uh, development site here where the proposed true hotel would be, 
You can see the existing Marriott Town Place suites here. Uh, access to and from the hotel sites utilizes this, as I mentioned, sort of a private frontage road along the east and then north sides of the marketplace site, uh, again within an easement for that purpose uh, to ultimately connect up with Pontiac Place, Pontiac Drive, and the rest of the public street network beyond. Uh, in addition to this primary uh, access point via the private frontage road, the uh, developer has reached an agreement with Trinity Church for a second emergency only access point from the hotel property to Holiday Drive. And in the site plan on the left hand side, you can see that access route here through the existing church parking lot uh, is in the uh, hashed marks here again from the hotel site down to Holiday Drive. Um, there would be a gate on this facility at the far north end here on the hotel site. Uh, the secondary access point is necessary for adequate emergency access response to the hotels uh, and again is only for use by emergency personnel in the event of an emergency. Uh, also along with the project, uh, sidewalk connections would be established from the site to North Pontiac Drive as well as US Highway 14. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but um, basically you'd have a sidewalk connection from the new True Hotel um, over to the Marriott site. And then beyond that is the existing sidewalk that extends, I'll move over to the aerial here, along the uh, east side of the marketplace building and ultimately connects up with a sidewalk that follows the property line here. And uh, as part of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's reconstruction of US Highway 14 this year, uh, WISDOT will install public sidewalk along the length of the south side of Highway 14. Uh, so this sidewalk that currently dead ends here in front of the marketplace will ultimately connect up with the public sidewalk there. Uh, in addition to the uh, sidewalk that will be constructed by WISDOT, they'll also be installing a bus uh, transit pull-off lane here and a new uh, bus stop shelter in the area uh, sort of in front of McDonald's there along the south side of Highway 14. Uh, other improvements to Highway 14 will include the addition of uh, curb and gutter, uh, a trail along the north side of the highway, lengthened turn lanes, offset left turn lanes for be better visibility, and uh, traffic signal replacements as well. Uh, this, uh, the image on the screen now shows the, the landscape plan for the true hotel area of the site at right, and at left uh, is a plan that illustrates the uh, sidewalk extension. Um, so again, this is the True Hotel development site here uh, with west to the left and north above. Um, this would be the new sidewalk connection um, on the hotel site and that continues here along the west side of the marketplace building before ultimately connecting up with a, an existing segment of public sidewalk that provides access from the front of the marketplace here, kind of off screen. Uh, west to North Pontiac Drive. So in addition to that sidewalk connection to Highway 14 that I mentioned, there would also be this uh, separate uh, connection from the hotel site to North Pontiac Drive as well. Uh, the landscaping that you see on the plan there meets the minimum uh, zoning ordinance requirements that apply and includes new plantings along all three property lines that are adjacent to the true hotel development site. Next two screens are the building elevation plans for the proposed hotel. Um, so uh, at the top there, that's the west facing building elevation. Uh, the bottom image is the south facing building elevation. And it's uh, easy to see in the south elevation here that uh, the swimming pool area of the, to of the hotel, which would be closest to the west property line, uh, is single story, whereas the rest of the building is four stories in height. This, the upper image here is the east facing elevation that would be visible from the interstate. And then lastly at the bottom here is the north facing building elevation. Uh, overall the building is 53 feet in height and for reference the existing Marriott on the property is 55 feet in height. Uh, the architectural requirements of the zoning ordinance are met by the proposed building in the opinion of staff. Uh, you can see two wall signs that are proposed, uh, one each on the east and north elevations of the building. And 
ground signage would be uh, shared with the existing Marriott Hotel. So there are a total of uh, three locations, uh, all of which have existing Marriott signage. Uh, the first of which is located along the interstate frontage of the site. That's this large interstate-oriented pole sign. Uh, then you have another fairly large uh, ground sign along the U.S. Highway 14 frontage of the Marketplace site, as well as a smaller ground sign along the North Pontiac Drive frontage of the Marketplace site. And in all three instances, the existing uh, Marriott sign face would essentially be uh, cut in half with uh, Marriott on one side and True Hotel represented on the other. So um, in, in no case are any of the three signs uh, proposed to be larger than the existing condition. It would just be a, a division of the existing sign faces. Uh, notice of this evening's public hearing was completed by staff as required. And we received a total of three uh, written comments. Uh, one from the Holiday Crossings Condominiums Association one from the owner of Michael Cycles, and one from the owner of Garrett's Vision Center. Uh, the Garrett's comments were provided after your agenda materials were distributed, so we have uh, placed a copy for each plan commission member uh, for this evening, paper copy, and we can also read those comments into the record uh, during this evening's public hearing, if so desired. Uh, for reference purposes, again, if you'll I'll refer to the uh, aerial photograph here, the uh, Holiday Crossings, uh, condominiums is uh, here to the south and east of the development site. Um, Michael Cycles is here near the northwest corner of the development site and then Garrett's Vision Center is located here along the west side of the development site. The uh, developer has proposed uh, a few revisions to their site plan in response to the concerns that have been raised um, by the neighbors. A copy of this was included in the uh, staff uh, packet for this item. Uh, you can see along the, the bottom of the plan here, there's a detail for a five foot tall uh, decorative aluminum fence. And the developer proposes to install that generally from the uh, easterly edge of that secondary emergency access point that I mentioned along the full length of the south property line of the development site. Uh, an existing chain link fence that's located along the west side of the development site uh, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but that begins near the uh, edge of the uh, proposed refuse enclosure here and extends northward uh, to roughly this point behind the Michael Cycles building. And so again, that chain link fence uh, would remain in place. Um, I do have a minor correction to make to our staff report. The uh, developer has not spoken with Michael Cycles, to the best of my knowledge, um, but the city, uh, city staff did speak with the owner of Michael Cycles today and uh, his primary concern with the proposed development uh, was that some form of fencing be retained where that existing chain link fence is currently. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the plans do call for that to be the case. Uh, the uh, letter that was provided by the developer along with uh, this exhibit that's on the screen also makes reference to um, the installation of temporary construction fencing uh, while construction is ongoing on site. And uh, staff recommend that uh, these revisions, both those noted in the letter as well as the plan, be incorporated into the conditions of plan commission approval this evening. Uh, subject to these revisions and the other conditions that we've listed in our staff report, staff believe that the criteria for conditional use approval are met. And we recommend that uh, approval of the uh, conditional use permit request this evening um, subject, be subject to those conditions following a public hearing on the request and we'd be happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff prior to opening the public hearing? Okay, before, I, I apologize, I just happened to look to the left. Um, let the record show that Commissioner Bodisher joined us at 6.05 this evening. Okay. So we have a couple letters, uh, comments from adjacent property owners, and, and one of them you've addressed already as to uh, the condominiums requesting a fence be installed where there is none now. And we have the letter from the developer saying that indeed there is that decorative fence that's going in along there. The other two letters seem to address uh, the fencing along the west edge of the property as well as uh, 
issues with debris uh, during construction of the first hotel and and finally issues regarding the view of the property. Um, you briefly uh, went through the um, landscaping plan and I wonder if you could just address that in a little bit more detail along the westerly edge because I think that that might uh, to some extent address the concerns about what the view will be from those businesses along North Pontiac Drive. And then secondly, I'm not sure what the current relationship is in terms of ownership of the property that both the two hotels are on and the marketplace property. And the reason I ask about that is that the fencing behind Michael's Cycles that was referenced as having some gaps, and in fact I drove by there on the way here and there are definitely a couple of spots where there's fencing missing. That fencing extends beyond, or the gaps in the fencing extends beyond the hotel site. Is there any relationship with the marketplace folks so that when the issues with that fence are addressed, they can be addressed all the way along the back there as opposed to just mm, roughly half of the property that is adjacent to the hotel? So kind of two related questions there. Yeah. So the, the developer, or excuse me, the, the owner of the marketplace site um, is, as I understand it, one of the partners among the ownership group of the hotel site. Uh, certainly the developer is represented this evening in attendance and, and may be able to speak to that in more detail during the public hearing. Um, but the owner of the marketplace has in fact been one of staff's primary contacts um, throughout the development of the hotel, uh, the initial Marriott Town Place Suites in 2017 as well as the True by Hilton Hotel um, today. So certainly he's been involved uh, every step of the way in, in the communication back and forth and is, is very well aware of the concerns um, that have been raised. Um, with respect to the, to the um, landscaping, uh, the landscape plan in the area of the hotel uh, is the, in the uh, image on the right hand side there. And again, it's difficult to see here and I apologize for that, but um, it does call for uh, several of the existing plantings located along that property line to be uh, retained, uh, as well as the installation of several new um, plantings in that area, and I think it's a mix of uh, deciduous and, and evergreen plantings. Um, there is not, by ordinance, a specific requirement to screen commercial property from other commercial property. Um, in fact, these landscape plantings that you see along that edge of the property um, are, are necessary in order to meet the ordinance requirements related to the amount of pavement that they've got on site, as there is a, a paved area. Say the ownership is still has a relationship. Perhaps if the owner does speak during the public hearing, we might ask him to speak to that issue. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions prior to opening the public hearing, Commissioner Mark Lang? I just had one. Um, going from the new hotel to the back of the uh, marketplace, there's a a, a new. Um, one-way traffic. Which way is the traffic going on that? Outbound. So it would be uh, folks uh, leaving the hotel would be uh, outbound there north and would then continue along the east and, and north sides of the marketplace. Is there any reason why that could not be a two-way to avoid confusion for people coming in at night? They're probably going to drive through it even if it's a one-way. Um, is there any reason why it was a one-way instead of a two-way? Yeah, I think the, the intent was to uh, do what could be done to try and uh, separate the traffic associated with the two hotels um, from any delivery or truck traffic that might be coming to or from the marketplace site. And it's my understanding that, that those trucks and delivery traffic typically will use the west and then south sides of the marketplace to make their deliveries and, and trash pickups and the like. And so the intent was to try to limit uh, the extent to which any hotel traffic 
um, is extending west from this uh, private frontage road here up in the northeast corner of the site. And so that, that was the intent, the reasoning behind establishing the, the one-way configuration there as opposed to, to two-way. Will there be signage um, added to um, the property to direct people to know which way to enter into this at night? Yes, there, there, is, um, there is some existing uh, signage, directional signage, along the private frontage road on the marketplace property, um, sending folks into the hotel site. Um, and uh, I haven't seen specific designs for how that might be modified to reflect both True and, and the Marriott, but my expectation is that it would be modified. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to ask any questions prior to opening the public hearing? See none right now. I just want to make mention of the fact, and thank you, Brian, also for talking about it, that we did receive Mr. Jarrett's, uh, Garrett's um, letter. So we have that entered into the record as well this evening. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak, um, you would go to either one of the podiums, and we would ask that you state your name and address for the record. Anyone wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to construct a hotel, True by Hilton, at 2702 Pontiac Place? Anyone wishing to speak regarding conditional use permit to construct a hotel, True by Hilton, at 2702 Pontiac Place? Good evening, Planning Commission. I'm not sure if I'm wishing to speak, but I was asked to answer a question, so I certainly will abide to that. Uh, my name is Craig Sedonico. I'm president of American Construction Services and American Architectural Group. Uh, we're the designers and uh, builders of the True by Marriott, as well as, excuse me, the Town Place Suites by Marriott and the True by Hilton coming up. Uh, 1125 North Silverbrook Drive, West Bend, Wisconsin, 53090. Um, the ownership entities, uh, Commissioner Weber, um, are similar. Um, myself and we have uh, members of the hotel management company. Uh, we're investors in the hotel properties, not necessarily um, the market marketplace buildings, but we can relay the message along to our mutual partner who's involved in all the properties. Um, I think you're probably talking about, I don't know if it's a hundred feet of fence, maybe something like that. It seems logical to me that it would continue on at least to the end of uh, Michael's cycle, so we'll be happy to relay that uh, to him. Any other questions that you may have? Are there any other questions of Mr. Sedan? You said you're construction manager or development manager? Right, we're the architectural firm and the construction manager, so my people are the ones that manage the construction. Okay, so did you see Mr. Garrett's letter? Yes. Did you see his complaint about how construction debris was managed in the first project? Yeah, and... Um, we not only had a daily project manager on the site, but he actually moved to Janesville for the 12 months, so he lived uh, just a couple of blocks from there. So I would encourage if city staff or any of you hear of something like that, or I would encourage the neighbors uh, to get in touch with us because we, again, have someone there um, each and every day managing the construction. So if we see some debris or if there's debris, debris flying around that we don't happen to see, give us a holler and we'll take care of it. We'll have a big construction trailer there that um, <laughs> that says it doesn't necessarily say come on in, but it, it should be pretty obvious. Thank you. Any other questions? I see none. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to construct a hotel true by Hilton at 2702 Pontiac Place? Anyone else wishing to speak? My name is Matt Tomaszewski. I'm the um, president of the uh, Holly County Crossings Condominium Association. I met, I've talked to Craig probably, I think, last Monday. And basically, he took care of all my needs that, I, that our association needed probably within three days of speaking to him with the fence. And another thing that wasn't mentioned here about the lighting from the Marriott, we are right directly behind the Marriott. and. Uh, something that wasn't mentioned here that the lighting was going to be addressed also on that. I just want to know, let it know for the record that he was going to take care of that and the fence, and I appreciate everything he has done. 
on here and taking care of all of our needs here. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding conditional use permit to construct a hotel true by Hilton at 2702 Pontiac Place? Anyone else wishing to speak? The public hearing is closed. What are the wishes of the commission? Commissioner Weber. I move to find that proposed development is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval as prescribed by the Janesville Zoning Ordinance and approve a conditional use permit to construct a hotel at 2702 Pontiac Place, subject to the conditions listed in the Planning Division Memorandum dated March 21st, 2022. And can I just ask staff, does that include the modifications that uh, were offered after receiving letters from the adjacent property owners? It does not. I think you should specify the inclusion of those as part of your motion. And further, that the uh, response to the adjacent property owners regarding uh, repairs to fencing be included in the development as well. Is there a second? Commissioner Markline seconds. I have a question, um, if I may have more discussion on this. Um, what about the lighting that was referred to by the last individual? Is that also in the site review letter? The, the lighting is captured. It, it may be difficult to see on the exhibit, sorry, but the, uh, the exhibit that was prepared by the developer does specifically reference modification of those light fixtures along the south property line to add uh, shielding to address the condominium association's concerns. All right. Commissioner Markley? We could modify our motion to include exhibit 10. Okay. All right. I would agree to that. Okay. So, Commissioner Weber, you still have the floor. Okay. The only thing I was wondering about that lighting, I thought we had a zoning requirement that said that lighting at the property edge had to be at, at a level appropriate for whatever the zoning was adjacent to it. So how, how does this uh, get through in the first place? The, the lighting section of the zoning ordinance and specifically that provision that requires uh, lighting at the property line to be a half foot candle or less is uh, as measured at ground level essentially. So um, that wouldn't necessarily preclude there being you know, any glare from uh, light fixtures in that area of the site from, from having an impact to neighboring property. Um, certainly we, we try to limit that to the extent that we can through um, uh, appropriate uh, fixtures and shielding as it were um, and certainly we expect that the addition of the shielding will address that sufficiently in, in this case. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Markline? I just had two things. One, the chain link fence is not the most attractive chain link fence but it's there and it's referenced that it's going to be maintained. You know, if they wish to upgrade it, they have the right to upgrade it. I would also note that the businesses on, on um, Pontiac Drive, if they wish to put a fence up, they have all the right to put a fence up too. So if one of them wants to put up a privacy fence, that's their right to do so. But as, as was noted here, there's no uh, screening in commercial properties as there would be if it was against residential. So that was my two. And the uh, one-way traffic thing made sense, so thank you. I'm sorry, maybe it's because I got here late. You just referenced item 10, I believe, Doug, to add. Or then, what is, I don't know what that is, I'm sorry. That's the um, reference to the lighting um, that will be on the back right. of Where the property. Right, where would I find, is there somewhere? That would be in the last thing, the last the thing on the agenda, or on the uh, package of the, let me just see if I can find the exact page sorry. for you. No worries. American companies at the top. Yep. It's um it's the very second to the last page. Exhibit ten. Oh, it's in the letter. Okay. Ah, got it. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's the letter itself. Got it. Okay. So um there's a motion by Commissioner Weber, second by Commissioner Markline. There's no further discussion. I'll wait for you, Brian, to get <laughs> Find commission members to vote shortly.
Um, mine is not coming up, but uh, my voice vote would be yes. So I do, um, do not see. Thank you. So that motion passes with all commission members voting in favor. Um, so congratulations on your project. I would ask, um, and maybe it would be helpful to be provided the addresses of their, or the phone numbers and the contacts of the individuals that have already reached out to you and vice versa, so that if there are questions, certainly know there'll be a large trailer there, but um, hopefully they're all working and they're not anywhere near the trailer. Okay, good. Thank you. Moving on to the second item of business is a public hearing conditional use permit to establish a grocery store at hy V with drive through pharmacy and grocery pickup facilities at 2500 Humes Road. Thank you again, Brian Schweigel, Senior Planner. Uh, this request was submitted by hy V Incorporated. The subject property is uh, formerly the location of a Shopco department store. The applicant proposes to convert the entire 98,000 square foot building uh, to a grocery store with interior restaurant and coffee shop spaces within the store's footprint. Uh, the property is zoned B4 Business Highway District and although uh, grocery stores are a conditional use in this district, or excuse me, a permitted land use in this district, conditional use review and approval by the plan commission is required because the project plans for hy V include uh, drive through pharmacy and grocery pickup facilities. And this is the, the site plan for the project on the screen now. The main parking field that exists on site today uh, would remain in the area between the building and Highway 14. There would be a total of 396 parking stalls on site, which meets the minimum requirement of 389. Uh, and I would also point out that an existing cross easement agreement involving uh, this site, the Red Robin restaurant, the marketplace retail site, and the uh, Taco Bell to the east uh, allows for shared parking and access across the various properties uh, that are party to the agreement. Uh, Hy-Vee offers a, a shopping service known as Isles Online. Uh, whereby customers place orders on the internet and then uh, use the four-lane grocery pickup uh, area that would be created between the store and the Red Robin restaurant. Um, and if you can see the mouse here, so that's, that's the area of the site here. Uh, you can see the existing building where Hy-Vee would have its main grocery store facility here. Uh, Red Robin is in the open uh, white space here. So it would be in this area of the site where Shopco uh, typically had their outdoor uh, garden center in the summertime uh, where that Isles Online facility with the four lane grocery pickup uh, would be created. Uh, there would also be an roughly 1100 square foot uh, building constructed along the south side of that four lane pickup facility here. And uh, that smaller building would be used for the temporary storage of grocery orders awaiting pickup. Uh, traffic flow in this area of the site would occur in a uh, clockwise motion. So folks would be uh, entering that area here and then proceeding into one of the four pickup lanes before uh, continuing on and exiting back where they came in from. Uh, also proposed is a single lane pharmacy drive through near the northwest corner of the store building. And so that would be uh, in the area right here. Again, just a single lane pharmacy drive through pickup uh, with the pickup location being uh, beneath the canopy along the west elevation of the main grocery store building. The uh, truck docks uh, also along the west side of the building uh, facing North Lexington Drive would remain, uh, but additional green space and landscaping would be created between the truck dock area and the uh, North Lexington Drive right of way in order to screen this area as well as to uh, separate the truck and delivery traffic uh, to the south from the uh, grocery store and other uh, customer traffic to the north. Um, in order to, to do so, there would be a new driveway opening created uh, here along North Lexington Drive, again, to facilitate uh, truck delivery and, uh, excuse me, truck access uh, and delivery vehicle access as well. And so the additional green space in this area of the site along North Lexington would uh, again fully separate the customer traffic from the uh, truck and delivery traffic. 
uh, the city engineer has reviewed and approved the additional driveway opening that's proposed along North Lexington Drive. The uh, city's on-call traffic consultant has completed a traffic study for the North Lexington Drive intersection uh, with the intersection with the main store driveway for a high V as well as the main Woodman's uh, excuse me Woodman's Market driveway <laughs> to the west. Um, so here you can see um, the aerial photograph on the screen, you can see the existing store building here, uh, the truck docks there, and again, this is the main uh, high V access point off of North Lexington, oriented directly across from the main Woodman's Market driveway uh, along the west side of that street. Uh, so this exhibit on the screen now depicts the, the recommendations of the traffic study that was conducted, and uh, principally that's to, the recommendations are to establish always stop control uh, based on the anticipated traffic volumes uh, following development of the High V grocery store. Uh, implementing this always uh, stop control would require an ordinance amendment by the City Council and uh, the addition of signage and pavement markings for both uh, southbound and northbound North Lexington Drive traffic. Um, both sides would include an overhead arm for better visibility of the stop signage for all four travel lanes. Um, so you can see here on the screen uh, that there's an image of an existing uh, stop control with the overhead arm, again with the intent being that that provides better visibility in this instance given that we've got uh, a total of four travel lanes, uh, two in each direction. Uh, the a recommended condition, it's, it's recommended among the conditions of plan commission approval this evening uh, that High V be responsible for paying the costs uh, necessary for the city's operations division to install the signage as well as the pa painted uh, pavement markings that you see illustrated uh, within the public street on the screen there. Um, maintaining visibility of the new uh, stop sign, uh, new stop signs at the intersection. Uh, also requires relocation of an existing bus stop shelter uh, from the public terrace area along North Lexington Drive to uh, private property along the east side of the sidewalk. Um, and here on the screen, uh, it's difficult to see, um, but you can see just south of the, the primary driveway here is that existing uh, bus stop shelter. So it would be relocated from the public terrace area on the west side of the sidewalk to High V's property on the east side of the sidewalk. Uh, High V, as part of its construction project, would uh, establish a concrete pad for the bus stop shelter to be relocated uh, and would also need to convey an easement for that purpose. Uh, the city would, as part of this larger project, uh, also establish an accessible crosswalk along the south side of the intersection. Uh, so that's demarcated here um, by the crosswalk painted pavement markings. Uh, in order to establish an accessible path uh, from the bus stop to both of the grocery stores as well as the uh, public sidewalk and the various other businesses in this area of the community. Um, so there would be a uh, sidewalk ramp, accessible sidewalk ramp located on uh, both sides of the North Lexington Drive uh, right of way. Uh, lastly, I would also note that the uh, city's on-call traffic consultant is represented this evening and uh, available to answer questions on the traffic study uh, if there are any. Uh, this is the elevation plan for the grocery store building. Uh, as you can see, Hy-Vee proposes to add uh, several additional window openings to the uh, U.S. Highway 14 facing north elevation, and that's the, the top image here on the screen. Um, next below that is the west elevation facing North Lexington. Then you have the rear elevation facing the south and uh, the portion of the east elevation that, that you can see. Uh, this white area here is where the marketplace building abuts uh, the uh, former Shopco. Uh, in addition to the window openings that are proposed on the front facing facade, uh, there are also several other architectural treatments proposed for the north and west elevations. Uh, as well as decorative lighting on those two facades uh, facing the public streets. Uh, you can also see on the left-hand side of the uppermost image here, uh, this would be the outdoor dining patio area uh, for the Wahlburgers restaurant that's proposed within the grocery store, as well as a, a small Starbucks coffee shop that, uh, again, would be located within the grocery store footprint. The 
wall signage that you see on the elevation plan um, has been reviewed against the sign ordinance requirements and, and meets those requirements. This is the elevation plan for the Isles Online building. Again, the smaller 1,100 square foot building that would be created uh, adjacent to the grocery pickup lanes. Uh, the colors and materials uh, of this building's exterior are intended to complement the main store building. And it would be the, the short end of the building that faces North Lexington Drive. Um, so again, here at the, at the top of the screen, this is the elevation that would face um, North Lexington Drive here, so it would be that, that smaller uh, section of the building's exterior. Uh, the wall signage that you see here uh, also meets the sign ordinance requirements that would apply for uh, wall signage on this building. Uh, ground signage for the site would consist of reusing the existing ground sign that you see along the uh, U.S. Highway 14 frontage of the property. Uh, the existing sign is 40 feet tall and roughly 230 square feet in area. Uh, the sign ordinance would uh, allow a sign of this height, 40 feet, um, but would limit the area of the sign to 164 square feet. Uh, staff believe, as we mentioned in the uh, staff report for this item, that it would be appropriate to allow for reuse of the existing sign on the property with uh, future modification of re or replacement of that sign uh, to meet the ordinance requirements that apply. Uh, notice of this evening's public hearing was sent uh, as required and staff have not been contacted by the public uh, since <coughs> that occurred. Uh, staff believe that the criteria for conditional use approval are met subject to the conditions in our report and uh, we recommend approval of the conditional use permit subject to those conditions uh, following a public hearing on the request and I'd be happy to take any questions. I have a couple questions. Go ahead, oh, go ahead All right. Um, are we tonight just focusing on the mechanics of the drive through pharmacy and the mechanics of the grocery pickup facilities? Is that the sole um, determinant that we're looking at this evening? So those elements of the project are the reasons why, by ordinance, uh, your review is required. Um, but I would say that the, the plan commission's purview as related to the criteria for conditional use approval um, apply to the project overall. So, so not simply those elements. Uh, Dwayne, I don't know if you would have anything to share on that. Yeah, Brian's correct. The, you know, the, the conditional use uh, review of, the, of the, the project, although triggered by those two particular elements, uh, still allows the plan commission to review the project that's in its entirety and make a finding of uh, uh, That all the standards for conditional use approval have been met okay. So questions on the outdoor display or the patio dining area are relevant for tonight's discussion. Yes. All right That's all I needed to know. Thank you okay. uh, Are there any other questions of staff? Um, yes the the proposed um, all stop timing would that I'm not sure what high B plan timing is and would that not be installed until they were open for business I'm just curious with the 14 construction because that's supposed to be done this summer correct it's only a one-year project so right, it's, do we look at do we think that and I understand everything's you know variable but that the 14 project would probably be done before high B was open and before this this always stop was installed it's my understanding that the city engineer intends to uh, proceed with the um, ordinance amendment that would be necessary uh, to establish always stop control here uh, in the very near future, um, you know, following plan commission right. action uh, this evening. Um, in terms of implementation of that, I, I believe the intent would be for that to be completed prior to opening of the store. Um, and I, I guess I'm not sure, you know, in terms of an exact date, perhaps the applicant could speak um, to that. Um, my understanding was that it's intended to be at some point in the fall, so generally corresponding with the Highway 14 project. Okay. Um, Duane, are you aware of any no, more I, specific? No, I think that's correct. The intent is to establish the always stop uh, prior to their opening. Okay. Commissioner Weber? Commissioner Weber? Yeah, yes, can has uh, is Woodman's in support of the four-way stop? I don't know at this point that uh, Woodman's has been engaged in the in the conversation. 
the change to the, that leg of the intersection as recommended here at the four-way stop uh, is more or less limited to uh, the designation of what would be a, uh, a through and a right turn lane and a left turn lane only. But they will certainly be uh, brought into the discussion at that time that the ordinance uh, change is proposed. But the design here would facilitate their movements uh, likewise with the change. Agree with that, but I would hope that at, they, at they this would point be I don't contacted. believe, yeah, that they've been um, at least engaged by by city staff in this conversation. I would think the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. They should be contacted. I, I agree that, that it will support them, but to, to take striking on their property, I assume there's a stop sign there already, but it's not on their a property, way not stop. Lexington. No, on their driveway. Right, yeah, as a stop sign. Pharmacy driveway is very close to Lexington. Um, I think in your your cover letter you stated that they're required to have uh, queuing space for five stalls, um, and uh, there's eight provided, so they, they exceed that. That's correct, and and that uh, that estimation is uh, of the eight vehicle queuing space is uh, with respect to the length of the pharmacy drive through itself um, without impacting kind of the main east-west drive aisle that's on the high V site. So I, I think the intent of the ordinance is to provide a minimum of five queuing stalls before it would have an impact on uh, public right-of-way. Um, in this case, certainly we exceed that um, on the site itself um, with some additional level of queuing uh, capacity available before it would have an impact on the public street. That eight spaces is all in that loop. None of it is even on their driveway, their main driveway. Okay. And then finally, you say there's a Taddy representative here? Okay. Uh, I don't know if I could ask him now and not. Well, you can pose the question, and, and the Taddy representative will be happy to speak at the public hearing. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that you will address whether or not there was any uh, concern or need for left turn lanes coming into these driveways with the volume of traffic there. Thank you. Commissioner Williams? Yeah, just wanted to uh, maybe refresh or inform this committee that um, the Alcohol License Advisory Committee, um, I believe in April at their first meeting in April, which is the second Tuesday because of the election, um, will be reviewing outdoor alcohol and um, request for, I would assume, also the music in that patio area. That was not reviewed when the initial request for a uh, Class B license for hy was brought to the ALAC, so it's coming back for that. So they could still have outdoor seating there at this point without alcohol, but that still needs to be reviewed. And I guess my question, I don't know um, who can answer it, but it, it's my understanding without the kiosk and the, and the um, pharmacy drive-through that if Hy-Vee was built the way that it's already been approved, there wouldn't need to be a four-way stop? Is that what the report is saying? With, with the addition of these two, then it needs a four-way stop? Question. I, I defer to the traffic consultant to, to answer that. Okay. Um, I have a couple of my questions have already been asked. Uh, the one question I did have, I, I'm looking at walkability and accessibility. So could you quickly go over again the bus shelter um, and then also for the toddy representative, if we can talk about uh, crosswalk safety at that particular intersection. So I understand that the pad will be moved over onto the high V property, correct? That's correct. Right. So it would be the, um, kind of along the east side, the right hand side of the North Lexington Drive um, street, uh, where the mouse is right now, that's generally the area where the bus stop shelter is currently, and it would be relocated uh, you know, due west, roughly 10 or so feet to be on the back side of the sidewalk. Um, instead of the front side along the street. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and then the very last question I have is this is the last um, outlot on this property, correct? Available? Or will there be? Well, this is, uh, the site is an approximate nine acre um, parcel of land from which they are redeveloping uh, what's before you this evening. Now, there, uh, there are other users and property owners on separate parcels in the, uh, I guess, shopping center, if you will, and opportunities to potentially create additional development are subject to further review and demonstration uh, that they can meet the, the, the ordinance requirements for the creation of an additional outlot. But that is not uh, something that's proposed on this site. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? If not, I'll open the public hearing. Seeing none, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to establish a grocery store high V with drive-through pharmacy and grocery pickup facilities at 2500 Humes Road. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Brem, Director of Site Planning with hy Incorporated, 5820 West Town Parkway, and that's in West Des Moines, Iowa, 50266. Uh, thank you for, uh, first I want to say thanks to staff and Brian specifically for welcoming us to the community and helping us uh, navigate our way through uh, the process uh, as we've gotten so far. We have a, an extremely s accelerated construction schedule. As you may have noticed, we've already demoed the floor of the existing Shopco building and uh, planning to start um, basically in full, uh, presuming uh, we're approved at uh, commission here tonight. Um, I won't stand up here too long. Uh, Brian did a good job of going through the project. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about the project, um, but I'll get out of the way so that you can answer your or ask your questions about the uh, traffic study. Uh, as much as I enjoy reading traffic studies, I'm not the person to answer those questions. Well, I, I think there's probably a couple of questions. I, I would like you to help me understand a little bit more about the um, single lane pharmacy. Sure. Um, <clears throat> So right now, the, the only location that we really have on this site, uh, just because of the way it was built as a Shopco, uh, is, the, is the old location where they have the, the pharmacy drive. Uh, we plan to reuse that space. Um, we did reconfigure it substantially, um, A, to get rid of the driveway that went along the west side of the building there so we didn't have to have truck traffic coming in that main entrance. And it, that also gave us some extra space to do some screening and it gave us some extra throat depth uh, on that entrance off of Lexington. Um, in addition, by just uh, confining the pharmacy operation only to that little space in front of the store, that allowed us to queue up, I think it's eight vehicles, which is far more than uh, we typically need in pharmacy operations. Uh, at most, you'll see two vehicles uh, queued up there waiting for their prescriptions. Um, uh, and so that basically just pulls uh, that pharmacy business out of the main traffic flow, uh, gives them a safe space. Um, and then uh, it's, a, it's a right in to that space, right off of the road, which is the, probably the safest movement you can make. Um, and then uh, you're even farther back from Lexington before you have to make the decision on whether to turn right or exit left uh, out of that space. Um, that's in a nutshell. Uh, Really, there's no window into the, the pharmacy. Uh, all the, the entire interior space on that west wall is uh, warehousing, racking. It's utilitarian. Um, the pharmacy is actually deeper inside the building, and so uh, our customers will uh, receive the, the, their service to the pharmacy through a pneumatic tube system that goes overhead and a, and a camera and phone intercom type of system. Okay. So, um I do have a couple of questions about that. Have you, have, do you have this existing pharmacy in other high vs currently right now? We typically have uh, a pharmacy drive up at every single store that we can possibly get it at. Uh, through the tube system? Through a tube system, correct. And that, that is, uh, in most cases, <laughs> what we'll do is have it along the front of the store and it'll interrupt uh, the main traffic flow uh, along the front of our store um, when we have that option. Um, and the reason we do that is, or the reason we have the tube system is so that uh, vehicles 
moving in that direction stay in the traffic flow um, of the vehicles moving across the front of our store instead of moving opposite. Um, if, you, if you do a window, cars have to turn around, and then you've got a car heading into oncoming traffic uh, to make the exit. So my next question is, um, it, it, do you have dedicated staff on the inside of the store? Because that would, that would be only addressing that tube from yes. the standpoint of queuing cars and having them move through the system? Yes. Yes. Okay. When, when a customer pulls up, uh, they'll hit the call button and the pharmacist uh, will service that customer right away. And the last thing I'm going to ask um, is, are there any visual cues or is it all auditory? Uh, so when the patient receives their medication, normally you would ask if you have any questions or if it's a new medication, you'll have to have a pharmacy consult. Right. Is it all auditory or is there a screen or how is that communicated to the patient? There is a screen. Uh, there's a receiver that you can pick up for privacy or there's also um, <clears throat> just a PA system that okay. you can talk into. So you have, you have all three okay. options. Um, if it's a complex a script that needs to be picked up in, the, in a complex uh, consult, um, our pharmacists will typically ask the customer to come inside uh, and, and deal with it that way it's rather than over the phone and through the screen. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kathy. I thought you were... Well, um, no, I wasn't going to ask any more, but I'm, I'm assuming okay. every commissioner has questions. Then I'll go last. Okay. That's Story nice of, of you. Life. We're going to go to the right and we'll move left. So Commissioner Markline, and then we'll go to Commissioner Weber. The only question that I would have is, I'm, a, I'm a, assuming that you're aware of the March 17th uh, site plan review letter and checking to make sure that you're comfortable with all the terms and requirements that you need to meet. Correct. Yeah, we, we've received that, and uh, we're in agreement with staff's conditions and comments. This is your time and place to rebut them if you don't like something. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Weber. Yes, uh, there was an Exhibit 6 in our packet, which is a letter from Hy-Vee. I don't know if it was from you personally, but it was from <laughs> Hy-Vee. And uh, it, it references uh, a number of stores that I would consider maybe not uh, traditionally part of a food store. So I see that Wahlburgers and I guess Starbucks have a separate entrance, but this uh, DSW Basin, Joe Fresh Clothing, are they just departments within the grocery store and not yes. an access in the, at the same door as the rest of the grocery store? Correct. It's, it's, uh, I don't like to use this comparison, but it would be similar to Target and where they have, you know, they have diff their clothing section and, and card section and those departments have their own decor and style, and they're uh, displayed independently inside the building. Well, I'm sorry to make you make that reference. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe That'd a different way to say is indirectly, it's like leasing space within hy -Vee. Correct. Well, since my son works for Target, I, I, well, I think that's a good comparison. Um, Wait. <laughs> and then I heard earlier our chairman asking about uh, pedestrian accessibility and the staff mentioned that as part of the highway project on 14 there'll be a sidewalk on the south side of the street the entire length will there be a connection for people that want to come through your parking lot the pedestrians out there there, there we, we have not shown a connection yet uh, and I, I believe that's because we didn't have the data yet on where the actual sidewalk was going to be placed uh, along Hume Highway 14 um, but there is space. If you look, uh, it's it's between the aisles on line and our major parking. There's uh, there's a median um, through there that's significantly. It, it's it's made wide enough so that the opportunity is there to connect directly to Highway 14 to the front of our store. Is that the median on the far east end of your site? Brian, it would be it would be on the west. Yep, right there. Thank you. Okay. And so there, w there would be a sidewalk actually in that yes, median. There, there's an opportunity to add a sidewalk there, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, that, and if it works with the state project, that would be your intention? Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Commissioner Williams? I have a question on the online pickups. Um, how, are, how is that online pickup area supplied from your store to there? Uh, uh, so orders are 
picked in the store and they're held in uh, refrigerated space inside the store up to an hour or two before pickup. <clears throat> and they're kept in uh, totes and stored on, uh, the best way to describe it is a, a large warehousing rack on wheels. It's about 18 inches wide, five feet long. It's got big rubber wheels, so it's all season, and we've got an electric tug that can pull it outside. Um, those will go out the, uh, there's a door directly north of where the loading dock is. You can, I think you can see it on the elevations. Um, there's, a, there's a vendor door there, and, it, and there's a sidewalk that goes due north, um, goes across the entrance, unfortunately, and then um, into the aisles on line. Uh, building. Uh, typically that's the, the least amount of uh, pedestrian traffic that we have are, are taking the orders uh, on those carts um, into, the, into the aisles and line facility. We can do 20 totes or 20 totes at a time on a, on a rack and we can join the racks together if we need to to bring up the 40 at a time. Um, so the, the crossing of that main drive is minimized. Um, but that's that in this situation is uh, how we foresee it working. And you have this available at other locations right now? Correct. Okay. Can you give me typically how many times during a day you're supplying that area? Uh, sure. Uh, the busiest time is typically 4 to 6 p.m. as you would suspect. Most people want to just pick up their groceries on the way home from work <clears throat> and not bother going into the store at that time. We can see up to uh, 30 to 60 orders in an hour uh, at that time. So that would be 120 orders. Uh, divide that by 20, you've got six, six of those warehouse carts going across the street in that time frame. And then these other pickup areas in the front, the kind of oval-shaped parking stalls in the front, is that is that what I'm saying? Those are, those are landscape islands. Okay. A little right. lima bean shaped. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We had to zoom in a little bit bigger. Okay. But that is, uh, okay. And that's, there are some handicapped areas there then. Correct. All right. That's all I have for now. Commissioner Bodichin. I was just following up on your question, Kathy, with the pharmacy. I assume, especially if there's narcotics involved, you have to have a visual identification, don't you? Give you my license. You, somebody Doesn't somebody have to look and make sure I'm the guy on the license? I'm not. I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> I'm going hiding on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was just like, and that, that's why I was just following up, because I assume while well, you're that well, business, kind of, wouldn't they have to? That's, there good, are, that's a good question. Right. There are know. times, though, however, when others have to pick it up, but that's addressed prior to the prescription. Right. But they still mm -hmm. ask for, like, you know, if we're well, married and I picked they, up your prescription, yes, right? They'd they still want to look at me, though. Yeah, yes, they will. Well, I, it wasn't so much that I was thinking of them looking at the individual, right. having the individual be able to communicate with the person who is behind the tube, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> uh, so, That yeah. sounds like a VH1 thing, behind the tube. Um, I, are there any other questions? I, I want to go back to the ingress egress behind the high V building where um, that's for your truck truck traffic. Um, I don't know how many trucks you get and I'm assuming the curb cut will be to address the size of the semis and, and things like that. Do they idle back there or they do you have a how does that work? Uh, that's good, another good question. Um, I'm assuming the trucks would not idle back there unless it's extremely cold and they need to keep the okay. engine running. Um, the only thing I could see idling back there would be reefer trucks, refrigerated trucks. Um, and I'm, then I apologize because yeah. I cannot drive back there because you are working on it right now. <laughs> um, does, that ingr does that road end at your building? Or maybe that's a question for staff. From the standpoint of... of um, I don't know why anyone would want to cut through, right, and go in the rear. Um, but does that does that go all the way across behind? It does, yeah. And it, there will be markings then from the standpoint of that ingress egress as it relates to truck traffic only, or are we allowing? Uh, it, 
help me understand the intent of that road outside oh, of Well, the, there's uh, other businesses to the east of us that have some employee parking uh, along that back drive, and they have delivery entrances back there. I'm assuming they will also want to use that cut once they realize it's there. Um, but I think this uh, I think this cut will clean up the traffic along Lexington, especially uh, compared to what was going on with Shopco before. Um, I mean, you could make that movement uh, before we made that cut out straight out into Lexington. You'd have to go around the west end of the building and, and come out uh, the main entrance. Um, we've just removed that portion of the connection. I just was curious. Like I said, I, I wanted to go and look, but the fence has prevented me. Yes. There was a curb cut there before. There just was? just relocating it. Yeah, because that's how they got to the loading dock. I don't think they ever used it, though, did they? What? Oh, but the curb cut went, they, that was on the side. You the, had to come in off of right. Lexington, and then you turn to back down into the loading dock for Shop Co. Right. I think they're just relocating it. Right. That's not guessing. They could confirm with the staff, but um, there was definitely a, a access out to Pontiac. Okay. Or out to Lexington, excuse okay. me. All right. Are there any other questions? Seeing none so far. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to establish a grocery store high V with drive through pharmacy mm -hmm. and grocery pickup facilities at 2500 Humes Road? Good evening. Michael May with Traffic Analysis and Design. Uh, we have a P.O. Box 128, Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Uh, 53012. So just here to answer uh, any questions that the commissioners have. Uh, there were three of them that were asked already, so I'll, I'll go ahead and jump into those. And if you need more clarification, just stop me and we'll, we'll keep going. So the first question that I heard was, will left turns uh, into the site be needed? So left turn lanes on Lexington to get into the site. Uh, they will not be needed uh, because it's an all-way stop. Uh, all the vehicles will be coming, of course, to the stop sign, you know, doing what they do to find out who's next and making their turns. The, the volumes are pretty well balanced. I think what you'll find is uh, vehicles will find their equilibrium. You know, who, who's turning left, who's turning right or going through won't matter. They're going to find their lane to, to get closest to the stop line the fastest. So we did not see a need for left turn lanes. Uh, regarding the uh, pharmacy and drive-through driving improvements, uh, no, it was the, the entire facility as a whole driving the improvements. Um, without the always stop control, we were finding that some movements from Woodman's would operate. If you recall, everything's measured from A to F, and D or better is, is acceptable. Um, we were seeing E's, which is unacceptable, coming from Woodman's. We were seeing some F's coming from the high V site. Signals weren't warranted. Always stop. Uh, everything gets to C or better. So... Um, I hope that helps answer that one. But it's, it's not just the pharmacy or just the drive. It's the whole, the whole picture. And then regarding crosswalk safety, um, I'm not sure the, the specific question on that one, but I would, I would recommend that you know, the, the crosswalk that's being installed be properly striped, stop tires be located at, you know, the proper distance back from the stop line. I would recommend you know, the ADA crossing um, uh, facilities, so you know, the, the proper... Um, curb ramps and everything um, and so I'm not sure if that fully yeah, addresses my, the question. My main concern was that is a very busy road Yes. and um, uh, I, I just want to make sure that if there are accentuated safety accessibility crossings that we have to take into consideration that we do so. Okay. So, um, you know, it's a busy road because it's a really busy intersection. Right. And um, hopefully there'll be a lot of people walking um, or, you know, taking other means of transportation right. to get to um, Hy-Vee and to some of the other stores around it. So I just wanted to make sure, based on the traffic count and a four-way stop, that are there other things that we need to consider when we look at walkability and safety of pedestrians right right yeah and I think the the crosswalks the the proper curb ramping um, should be sufficient as a, at an always stop um, at a signal I would probably recommend you know additional timing things um, but as a 25 mile an hour road with the always stop um, all vehicles should be stopping watching where they're going it should be a bit safer than the the two-way stop 
right. that exists today. I would like to tell you that people drive 25 miles. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> However, they're it probably is... closer to 30 <laughs> plus. Mm -hmm. So that that is a concern. Um, from a staff perspective, are there any bike trails that are proposed at all that would be merging into this? Not immediately contiguous to the site, but with the uh, state DOT's reconstruction of Highway 14 on the north side of that corridor, there will be um, a 10 foot wide bike and pedestrian trail system. So connectivity uh, to that will provide a connection to the, the balance of the city system. Okay. Uh, thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh, Commissioner Williams, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> When you did your traffic study on this, and I, this tote thing going back and forth across that, the entrance going over to supply the online groceries, was that taken into consideration at all? I know you do car count and traffic count, but here we have, uh, you know, uh, things that are going back and forth and and um, you know, blocking the 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 traffic, so. Yeah, thank you for the question. I, I, as I understand it, you're asking, you know, at that crosswalk location where the carts will be brought across to the drive-through and everything, was that taken into consideration? I did not specifically um, study that, but uh, as other retail venues, you know, we see pedestrians crossing to the uh, to the parking fields and such already. Um, I don't anticipate, you know, I was looking at the site plan, I don't anticipate that vehicles would back up into Lexington or anything uh, because of that. Is that the question? Well, I, I, yeah, I guess I just wanted to know if that was factored into your study because unlike a pedestrian going across, we have these from what they're carts, saying, yeah, motorized, you know, tugs going across on the carts and how that affects the traffic flow there. Oh, sure. And I apologize. I wouldn't be able to answer that. The gentleman here seems to um, have an answer. And, and just for... Information, I live on Lexington south of Holiday. Oh, wonderful. And uh, yep. it's not a 25 mile an hour <laughs> Absolutely street. Absolutely not. By <laughs> any means. Um, you know, uh, when they're coming off a of Holiday heading south, they're accelerating all the way until you can't hear them until they get to the next stop sign. So um, instead of putting a four way stop in here, um, would, did, was it ever looked at to maybe? that this road is too much of a freeway to narrow it down to a two-lane street in that area and just make them right-hand turns or, you know? Or, yeah, that, that's a great question because actually we did a little bit of, after the TI was in, we had some communication with, uh, with Anna and, and engineering and one of the ideas that we had is, because the question came up, is there something we can do other than overhead stop signs? And I said, well, to do that, you would probably need to, to narrow the street. You know, if there'd be a way to stripe exclusive left turn lanes on, on Lexington uh, and then put in one through lane each direction on the opposite sides of that, you would leave room for a bike lane. Um, that, could, that could also work, but unfortunately, it would still have to be an always stop. Um, condition at this intersection so we it wasn't looked at expressly in the study but yes if if the city would decide in the future to make this uh, a three-lane cross-section again like the left turn lanes down the center a through lane each direction you would have room for bike lanes and it would still operate well but you would still need the stop sign that's all I have for now yeah. thank you sure I think I need to uh, explain the, the carts a little bit better. Uh, since we have the ability to uh, pick the orders and pull them out to the uh, aisles in line kiosk building, you know, one to two hours uh, ahead of a pickup, um, if we're having issues with carts and traffic uh, conflicting, uh, we, can, <coughs> we can have those orders out into the kiosk uh, before the traffic starts to arrive. So uh, that, that'll be something that uh, we learn as we go. and. Tying up inbound, outbound traffic into the parking lot. But I think you, you stated in your original uh, um, statements about this that you know most of your pickups are called in between four and six o'clock when people are want to get it and, and go home. Right. With it. So it seems like everything is coming in at one time. 
they've got to place their order at least four hours ahead of time. So we have time to pick the order, put it on carts, get it out there, and be out of the way before 4 p.m. So, uh, so I guess that's the point I'm trying to make is um, the timing of when those carts go across the drive lane can be adjusted. All right, thank you. Follow up? Yeah. I assume you have um, grocery carts. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you'll have um, 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 areas on the parking lot where they'll have to bring them. How similar would bring grocery carts back in the store be to your aisles online in terms of, you know, blocking traffic at times of the day? Uh, it, it may be more disruptive, uh, the shopping cart. Uh, depending on how many shopping carts are being pushed back in, if you have a, if you have 30 carts in a, okay. in a stack, I mean that takes two people pushing or or one of those electric similar disruption. Tugs. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other, Commissioner Boggs, did you have any questions about traffic? I do not. There's 80,000 pages in the report I can read if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about all that technical stuff. And I think I, I'm right up with John in my interest in it. <laughs> all right. Apparently, there are no other questions right now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak regarding the conditional use permit to establish a grocery store, high V with drive through pharmacy and grocery pickup facilities at 2500 Humes Road? Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else? Public hearing is closed. The wishes of the commission. commission. I have a question, and it's just a question. It's not a motion. But um, <coughs> do we have the possibility? I'm, I'm concerned the fact that we're looking, and I understand the council has to approve the ordinance change for the all stop. But I'm concerned that Woodman's doesn't, even, doesn't sound like we they even know about this. And so my question is, is this something we could approve and pull out that part until Woodmans is notified. I just, I mean, that's that's a game changer, I think. And I, for them not to know, I don't. I think we should have their input if if they want to get it. I mean, maybe they don't. Maybe they think it's a great idea, but I don't think that's fair for them to not know. So that's my question. Okay, Dwayne. Yeah, and, and that's a good question. Um, I I think our approach to this is is one that includes recommendations, at least as the traffic consultant. Uh, consultant here is identified improvements along that uh, west leg, but quite frankly, um, I, I think the review here is is going to be a request to him to make those improvements on their west leg. It exists as it currently stands today. I don't know that there's anything uh, other than striping and turn lane designation that would would alter. Um, the improvement uh, there and, and, and again, maybe. Um, Michael may may want to con comment on this, but um, I, I don't know that the uh, the improvement there is that significant. We're talking about a turn lane designation, and a question was asked earlier. Um, you know what triggered uh, you know what what triggered the study? What triggers the the need for these improvements? Uh, remember, we have about a ninety eight thousand square foot. Uh, building here that was formerly um, a department store. Less the drive-through components here, all of those other facilities are permitted uses within the building. So the combination again is is what brings us to an all-way stop. But I, I'm just wondering if Michael could comment a little bit on that particular leg to help the commission better understand what we're looking at uh, uh, addressing here in that respect. Absolutely, yeah. So the, the change is strictly paint. Um, they would take Right now, they have a shared left through lane. They would make it left turn only. They would take the, the right turn only lane and make it a shared through right. Um, I went back because um, I was asked to be prepared for this question. If for some reason they did not want to change the designation on their side, things can still will still operate well, but they actually get better operation for their patrons if they restripe it that way. So. Um, if for some reason they were adamant that this was not going to happen, uh, we can still get acceptable operations and, and operate it as an always stop. I don't. I, yeah, I think they've got the, the, the cash to pay for the striping. I think it's it's especially with the construction we're going to have this summer. It's you know anybody that lives in Janesville right now knows how <laughs> do I get to across 14 right? Right. And and you know Ryan Road's never been so busy. Um, 
So it's going to create an issue in front of their store. It's not the striping. It's, it's not pain for a stop sign. It's the fact that there's going to be a traffic issue in front of your store. And is that going to be a good or bad thing? I don't know. I, I would guess the summer could be a really bad thing because that's going to be a you think it's a busy street now, wait till you know all that 14 traffic has to use it. So I just, I just don't think it's fair without hearing from them. Because I have a feeling there's probably concerns they have that I'm not thinking of and nobody else in this room probably is thinking of because it's not us, right? And, and so I, I, I'm not saying it's not the right thing to do. I just think it's they're one of the biggest businesses in town and, and a lot of people from this town go there every single day. I think we should hear from them. And that's that's my only point. Not if it's good or bad, but I just don't think it's fair to not hear from women. You know, I think same thing. If we didn't hear from High B, we just did this. I don't think that would have been fair. I think we need to hear from the parties that are impacted the most before we make a decision. Commissioner Weber, I I had expressed the uh, question earlier about whether or not they had been notified. Right. The staff had assured me that they would will notify them. We aren't making a final, we don't have the authority to make this a four-way stop the council does. So I think we still should be making the recommendation. I will support making the recommendation as it stood with, and, and it simply requests that staff notify uh, Woodman's prior to it going to the council and there's plenty of time to do that okay so i don't think we need to slow up the step we can keep things going here okay fair enough um, thank you Mr. Williams, Mr. Mark i'm just going to say i understand um commissioner banditcher's concerns i would say that woodman's customers have four other ways of leaving that main parking lot so they have options this is pretty much one of two options to leave the Shopco, soon to be High V area. If I understood uh, the explanation here, it was a failing intersection by traffic counts and it's been improved. So it would be very difficult, I think, for wooden ones to try to not want to improve a failing intersection. It's, a, it's gonna make it safer and better for everyone. But if they come to council and they have legitimate concerns, we can definitely address them. Fair enough. Thank you. So there's no other conversation, no other questions of staff. The public hearing is closed. What are the wishes of the commission? Commissioner Weber. I'll make, I'm prepared to make a motion. I move to find that the proposed development is compliant with the standards for conditional use approval as prescribed by the Janesville Zoning Ordinance and approve a conditional use permit to establish a grocery store with drive through pharmacy and grocery pickup facilities at 2500 Humes Road subject to the conditions listed in the Planning Division Memorandum dated March 21st, 2022. I have further would uh, ask the uh, staff advise Woodman's of the of the uh, question regarding the four-way stop proposal prior to it being submitted to the City Council for action. So there's a motion by Commissioner Weber, second by Commissioner Markline. Commissioner Weber, you have the floor. I, I think that this is a, a, a good and appropriate development for this area. Um, I think this this commission had been advised by a previous developer that uh, um, we should alter the, the use in this area because nobody else would want to come in and it certainly didn't take very long for a very good development to come in appropriate for this very prime business area in, in Janesville. So I'm pleased to see this. Commissioner Markline? I would just say, um, as we heard in our testimony tonight, hy V has experience in this uh, remote gar uh, grocery uh, thing and their remote um, pharmacy. So we're relying on your expertise. If there's concerns, I'm sure they're gonna be right on top of it. Um, everything that we've seen evidence is there on top of it. So hope, them, hope for the best. So there's a motion and a second. At this time, I'll ask commission members to vote.
I'm in favor of it. <laughs> Doesn't work. And that motion passes with all commission members voting in favor. Uh, none opposed. Let me ask what um, date will this go to city council? I don't believe we've identified a city council introduction date yet, but uh, that will be real soon. Okay, so to- Yeah, my days. Okay. <laughs> it won't be a week from now. Okay, because uh, to Commissioner Weber's uh, request, right, that there would be that reach out to Woodman's prior to. Absolutely. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, good luck with your project. Thank you. All right, moving on to the item number six, new business. There is none this evening. Item number seven, the director's report. Uh, yes, thank you. Just one item to uh, report on this evening at the city council's last meeting a week ago, March 14, the, uh, the planning staff uh, presented information on the new web-based social media platform, which uh, is designed to uh, generate community feedback on the comprehensive plan update. Uh, we have, uh, I guess, labeled that uh, tool as the Places of Janesville, which was presented to the uh, Plan Commission Update Steering Committee, I believe in February. That has now been placed uh, on the city's website and is available for uh, uh, utilization and more information will be released soon about how to access that and uh, make the community aware of providing public input using that social media um, platform. That's all I had. Could, um, just out of curiosity, I'm assuming that the information from the Parks Department is going to be um, available. Normally they send out a catalog. I don't know if they're sending out paper but that might be something to include it, it with. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, uh, although I think I just received our water bill. Um, as far as notification? Right. I, I think the intent was to issue a, a press release and put it on the, the, the city's. Oh, nice. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, blast out, email blast all, all folks, but it'll be on the website, and my guess is others will pick up on that as well. So Yeah, especially if we can ask our other city partners, DJI and Forward Janesville, to kind of push it out as well. Sure. That would be great. You bet. Anyone else? If not, we're moving oh, on. No. Oh, Mr. Marquardt, just had a question, and you can defer comment if it's not appropriate. The former Johnson Bank out store on Wright Road at Milwaukee Street, the for sale sign is down and there's people moving things in and out of there. Is there something planned for that that you're privy to talk about and would that need to come in front of the plan commission? Yeah. I'm not currently aware of what that is and it's too bad our uh, building director Tom Clipper just left because he would be the other individual who would know based on occupancy uh, inspection and permitting but uh, not currently aware of okay, thank their you. use anyone else any item number eight plan commission announcements none thank you we're adjourned